This is a $35 Bitcoin miner. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to easily set it up, reconfigure it, and what are the odds of actually mining a Bitcoin? Okay, you might've actually seen these miners around. They're pretty common. I actually got this one from Bitcoin Merch for $35. And they send you this miner and a few other cool things like some worthless Venezuelan fiat currency because of hyperinflation, this $1,000 bill. Uh, is basically worthless, as well as this actual metal Bitcoin, which is kind of cool. Another option, of course, is to go to Amazon. You can order one of these for about $25 and I'll put the link down in the description. All right, let's just jump right into the setup and then we'll talk about what these miners really are for. Now, you can, of course, use your computer to set this up or you can use a phone. I'm gonna show you how to do it on an iPhone. Now, it's pretty simple. The first thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna plug your miner in. I know, crazy. So it's gonna plug in, it's gonna boot up to this screen, which basically has a QR code that you can scan. Now, the Wi-Fi network on this is already active, so you can actually just go over to your computer and find it in your Wi-Fi networks. But we're gonna show you how to set this up on a phone right now. Now, before you set this up, the main thing you're going to need is a Bitcoin address because you're gonna to need to put in a public Bitcoin address for a wallet that you own. So if this thing does mine a Bitcoin, then it will send the Bitcoin to your wallet, very important. Now I would recommend using a Bitcoin address that is to a cold storage wallet. Now why I would recommend a cold storage wallet as compared to just a wallet that is an app on your phone is because if you do mine a block, that's gonna be three and a quarter Bitcoin, which at the time of recording this is over $300,000. So if you did win that block, you wanna send it to the most secure location that you can. And that would be a cold storage offline hardware wallet. Now it's as simple as clicking the camera app on your phone and of course scanning the QR code. And then it will come up with joining the nerd miner network. So we're just gonna click join here. You might need to go to your Wi-Fi settings for this portal page to pop up. So once it's populated, then you see the Wi-Fi manager setup, and this is where we're gonna configure it. Now, if you did want to do this on your computer, you could of course connect to the same nerd miner Wi-Fi on your computer, and then you could just enter the IP address that you can see at the top there into your browser. And that would bring you to the same setup page only on your computer. So we're just gonna click configure Wi-Fi and we're gonna get this set up. Now for the Wi-Fi network that you wanna choose for this, it has to be a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. It can't work on the 5G, it's gotta be a 2.4. So we're gonna choose that from home here. And then we'll just enter our password. And now for the pool URL and pool port, we're just gonna leave the default ones here because publicpool.io is an open source solo mining one that anyone can use. Some of the other ones you can find out there don't want nerd miners, they don't want smaller machines like this clogging up their pool network. So this is one of the basic open source ones that most people can use. It's the easiest to use. So we're gonna go ahead and use that one. Now the pool port is the same, so we can just keep that. And then in this one is where you enter your Bitcoin address. So I'm just gonna enter my Bitcoin address here. Feel free to send me some Bitcoin. Thank you very much. Now, of course, I need to say this, always make sure that you're using your public Bitcoin wallet address. Never use your private one, never put that into anything, never put it on the web, don't do anything with it. Always use your public one. This is the one that you would hand out to anyone if they're gonna transfer Bitcoin to you. So always use your public wallet address, no exceptions. All right, so here's my address. Feel free to send me some Bitcoin, thanks a lot. And then you put in the time zone from UTC. Now UTC is basically in London. We are minus seven from London, so we're just gonna put that in there. And we can just leave all these other settings as is. All right, let's hit save. Now, once we've done this, this should be sending all of the information to our nerd miner and it should be setting up. So we should see shortly that this thing is going to click on and there it goes. And sometimes you gotta wait just a little bit for it to turn on the hash and to get started. And there it goes. And now we're officially mining Bitcoin. As you can see, we're mining at almost 350 kilohertz and we have our one miner working. Now you wanna check and make sure that it's set up correctly. All you have to do is go to publicpool.io. And from here, if you paste in your Bitcoin address that you used, it should show up with your worker. And that's it, you're mining. Now for this particular nerd miner from bitcoinmerch.com, I found that the way to actually reset this so you can reconfigure your nerd miner is to hold the boot button rather than the reset button. It's a little strange, but if you hold the reset button, it just turns the device back on and off and doesn't actually reconfigure any of your settings. So if you turn the device around, you'll see that there's the two buttons on this one. Some of them will have different button styles. Some will have three buttons on the top, different stuff. You kind of have to try different things to figure out what works for yours. But for this one, I found that for the two button one is if you hold the boot button, for around 10, 15 seconds, eventually it will return on and it will reset all of the configures on it. So it's actually the boot button, not the reset button that can reset your device. Now, what are the actual odds of this thing mining a Bitcoin? Well, to be honest, this kind of thing really is just more for the fun of it and the educational purposes of just being able to visualize the network 
and see what it is. That's really what these tiny lottery miners are for, because if you did calculate the odds, you would basically have to take the total hash rate of the network and divide it by your hash rate. Now, if the network's at 1.1 Zeta hash, which basically has 21 zeros after it, where as opposed to this one, it's three with five zeros after it. So if you divide those numbers by each other, my odds are a 3.18 quadrillion chance of winning a Bitcoin block. So will one of these miners mine a Bitcoin block for you? Probably not, but it's definitely a very fun thing to have. And the amount of energy draw that this thing takes is so small that it basically doesn't make any impact at all. Give this video a like if it was helpful to you and we'll see you next time, fam.